about conditional PDF and computation of joint PDF. Once we are having better, better understanding of conditional PDF, then we will compute joint PDF with the help of multiplication rule by computing conditional PDF and prior PDF. So such computation we will see it here. So coming to outline of today's lecture. Now first I would like to discuss about uh, conditional PDF of a continuous random variable condition on an event. Okay, say event may be uh, here it would be ev event would be defined by uh, certain kind of uh, continuous random variable. So there are various situation of event. Uh, so you know that uh, regarding continuous event uh, introduced by con continuous random variable we had already seen enough uh, in the uh, previous classes the same concept of event will come and uh, if you put conditioning over that event so what kind of uh, situation is bringing in the uh, updated uh, what we call it uh, or new um, distribution of x so conditional so that's where conditional pdf would come here and we will see uh, how conditional pdf we we have to compute the process we will talk how to compute conditional pdf of a random variable condition on certain event okay after that i will discuss about computational computational approach of joint pdf generally if you directly try to compute joint pdf of any two continuous random variable then it would be really, really difficult task okay generally it would be very difficult so what you have to do you have to go through multiplication rule then you will be able to compute joint pdf through that multiplication rule so similar to what we had already seen in the process of computation of joint probability mass function same process will come here as well but here everything we are discussing from continuous random variable perspective so uh, First, uh, let us define conditional PDF with condition on an event. So, we will talk about we will have a random variable x and we will have an event a that we are calling it as a partial information reward regarding that experiment. Uh, okay, that means given this event, what is the PDF of x? Definitely, if you are talking about x, x then, we, then it will definitely have a PDF f of x. So it would be definitely it would be given. But once you are having uh, information about A, so this information uh, how it is going to change the PDF of X. So that scenario we will see that given. A, so in that scenario we will talk about a new kind of PDF that would be conditional PDF of X given A. So we will talk about this one. So it is what it is updated one. So what kind of uh, this one you can say that it is prior one and this one is the updated one so how we can find this one so how we can define so first we will define this one later we will go for uh, two random variable perspective so the conditional pdf of a continuous random variable where uh, we put conditioning on an event a we define it like this way we define so again i always say that uh, can this uh, if you take pdf PDF is always what? It always happens to be probability per unit area or per unit length. If uh, x is taking value uh, uh, unidirectionally in along a single direction, then uh, area would be just length. Okay, so that's the situation. So if you um, take PDF and multiply with uh, corresponding width of uh, uh, width of the interval from which x is observing value. So suppose here x is observing value from where to where x is observing value from x to x plus delta very small interval of length delta x plus delta okay x is observing value from here so we are trying to define conditional pdm over this interval so how we will define it we will define in the same framework what we wish to define so it, it is what so it is talking about probability of observing x conditionally Conditionally, the condition on A in the interval uh, of length delta. Okay, so uh, so simply if you try to further see it uh, from it is what it is just a probability one kind of conditional probability. A condition is introduced by A because here you multiply this density by A. So from the definition of conditional probability, what does it say? It is saying that joint occurrence of X and A. So here one you know, event is defining corresponding to x another event is coming with respect to a about which we have already uh, observed okay so that's where we are talking about here this year joint occurrence of x 
which is falling between x to x plus delta and joint occurrence of a okay if these two occurs jointly uh, this then we will say that this one is the joint probability divided by probability of observing a this one this one is the probability of observing a or simply you can write it it is probability of a okay so this is the situation so here two situation would come here in order to compute this joint probability of x and uh, a okay how so here so sometime it may happen that there is a common element between these two event okay simply it is an event which is defined by uh, random variable x and this one is event a about which we know that uh, through partial information okay so if you try to compute this one if suppose that uh, when uh, if every x uh, here uh, if we try to focus on only common element which are here both uh, that this x is between these two points and also in within a so in that case what would be this one this one would be just uh, prior pdf pdf of x times delta that width we are talking in the inter interval or infinitesimal interval of width delta so so this property is just when x is coming from a then simply this property is equal to f of x type delta f of x is what it is pdf of x divided by in denominator we always see probability of a due to definition of conditional probability it is coming but suppose if x is not in a that simply we can say that there is no joint occurrence of event between these two okay so that means this one is a null event so that's where zero by probability of a would be zero so um, from here we we can see see that the conditional pdf times delta is equal to uh, the prior pdf or marginal pdf of f of x times delta divided by pa uh, p of a probability of a when x is coming from event a if x is not coming from event a it is zero so simply here approximation is coming so we can cancel the delta here when delta is approaching to zero then it would be what simply this density function conditional density function is equal to uh, this uh, ratio that means uh, here what do you do uh, you have marginalized or you have normalized this uh, uh, density of x by amount probability of a so this is the definition of conditional probability of x given a so that directly it is coming how it is coming from so through the definition of uh, what we call it density we got the definition of uh, conditional density how uh, so same approach uh, uh, what uh, during the process of defining con density same approach we have applied here and by the definition of uh, conditional probability we come up with explicit form of uh, conditional density function as a ratio of the uh, marginal density of x and probability of a when x is from a when x is not from a then joint density would be zero so that's where corresponding conditional density would be zero so easily we can say that uh, our new universe from the definition of conditional probability mass function our new universe would be what a we have to focus on a because it, uh, within a conditional density would be uh, zero outside a conditional density is is zero we don't have to focus on outside a so that scenario is coming so one kind of situation is you can say that if i talk about uh, characterization of conditional pdf of x given a then simply it is uh, very much uh, implied from this geometry of conditional pdf of x why you can say that the probability of a it would be a fixed number once because a is already decided so it will have a probability certain probability with with certain pro probability a will occurs so we know this one is a constant so what is that so shape of uh, this conditional pdf it would be completely characterized by shape of the uh, what we call it uh, marginal pdf of x so so graphically if you would like to see that suppose we are having uh, this is the marginal density of x that means simply you can say the density of x okay now once you come to know uh, of an event a that means a, a is observing value between a to b okay so if you this is the event a then if you in that case if you so you will have a new density that uh, uh, density would be x given a f x given a so if you are trying to compute this density so here from the definition of conditional density what we had already seen that it would be non zero between a to b and outside a to b it would be zero we don't have to because there is no joint occurrence of a uh, outside ab okay joint occurrence of x and uh, this interval 
outside is in this interval there is no joint occurrence that's why outside it will be zero only uh, conditional density it would be between a to b it would be non zero okay now apart from that what is happening that so what we uh, we see characterization between these two we see that uh, it is what uh, this conditional density is uh, having same shape what the marginal density had okay but uh, there is one difference that this uh, marginal density has been raised or has been normalized by the probability of a we know that uh, probability of a if you take probability of an event it would be always less than one or equality also you can take it if it is a certain event but generally for practical purpose we take probability of a it is between 0 to 1 okay so if any quantity quantity which is which is 0 uh, less than 1 then what is nature of this one anyone would like to say that what would you value of probability of uh, 1 by 1 by probability of a what what would you value of this one anyone are you listening to me? The protein, yeah, it would be greater than one. This quantity would be greater than. So if you multiply uh, density of x both sides, what you will see, you will see that the ratio of density of x divided by probability of a, it would be greater than marginal density of x. Or simply you can say the density of x so greater than so that's way you can see here from the picture it would might be clear what is this one this one is the conditional density of x given a so here probability of x it is just provide, uh, providing a normalizing condition it is raising it is raising the density so making after conditioning what is happening that we just focus on the event a only uh, within event a we don't have to focus outside the event okay a so that's where uh, in order to make this conditional density legitimate so that's where we see there is a raising so this one is the conditional density we can easily see that conditional density would be greater than uh, marginal density so that's where this situation is so from the graphical picture it might be clear to you okay this is the definition of conditional pdf and later we will uh, seek uh, conditional pdf with respect to x and y Two, two random variables would be there and with respect to that we will define so let us do so, a few interesting example application of conditional pdf so one interesting um, application of conditional pdf is coming here in the case of memorylessness okay um, so uh, you had already seen that uh, geometric random variable one is geometric random variable and uh, another exponential random variable so ex right now talk about exponential random variable so if you are talking about exponential random variable so what is the pdf of exponential random variable anyone recall so i would like to write in unified form so it is lambda into into the power minus lambda x and here you will you will multiply with unit a step function u of x unified form so this is the density of exponential random variable with parameter lambda okay so it is having a very interesting kind of property that we say that it is memorylessness property that means past is not uh, affecting the future memoryless memorylessness okay so that property so how we define memorylessness so we, we are defining like this way suppose we are having a random variable x then it will have a memorylessness property if if you take any uh, observation of x any non-negative observation of x we know that uh, uh, the exponential random variable is defined by having non-negative non-zero density only for non-negative value of x so that's where this non-negative condition is coming okay so it might be clear to uh, everyone from the definition of exponential random variable so remember that our baseline for defining memorylessness is either uh, exponential random variable or uh, discrete version of exponential exponential is uh, uh, geometric so geometric random variable so that situation is coming so how we define memorylessness it says that so that means if you're de uh, uh, defining an event a uh, call this this is event a okay and call this is the future situation this one is the uh, this this you say that uh, you say that uh, it is future situation it is said it is saying that up to time t okay it is or 
you can better say that uh, graphically if it you can represent uh, t would be here then t plus x or x plus t it would be here x plus t okay so if you are so this is this uh, we say that it is what uh, right tail x of t is greater than equal to t uh, this event is talking about x is greater than equal to x plus t okay something more right you can say that something more right if this situation is coming so what is happening that here s i have taken we we can take it x or s there is no any issue uh, you can take it s here same just combine to same notation s plus t so what is happening that so if you are trying to compute this uh, uh, this one uh, uh, this quantity is more brighter than this quantity you can easily see that so it is more it is having more futuristic what we call it you are going towards more right okay so if you are trying to compute this probability and uh, condition on this probability okay uh, this probability then uh, if this probability is just equal to that means this condition is not affecting the probability or simply otherwise also you can say that if you are willing to compute uh, uh, this probability how you can compute it uh, it is just uh, independent of t it is just independent you, you see the t is not going to affect that uh, that means having information about this is not going to affect to compute this probability so just we are getting it a uh, probability of s so what uh, probability that so in that case simply that random variable will have memory relationship relationship property or if you are willing to compute this probability uh, directly it is just product of these two probability okay that situation is defined uh, memory relationship property and just i will take one example here example example through example it would be more clear that how suppose uh, alvin goes to a bus stop where the time t uh, between two successive buses has an exponential pdf it is having exponential distribution okay suppose that alvin um, arrived t second after the uh, preceding bus pre preceding bus arrival okay that is what that we are having information that that uh, this t must be greater than t because uh, uh, the preceding bus arrived at t second so that's why this t must be greater than a small t okay now let x be the time that alvin has to wait for the next bus arrival okay so we have to find the conditional pdf of x given a so how we can find conditional pdf so in order to find conditional pdf we know that uh, up to t or uh, that means when t t is you may have a question why we are computing this kind of event t greater than uh, t because it is an exponential random variable and you might have already seen that what is the probability of uh, x greater than a anyone would like to have compute what is the probability of when x is a random exponential random variable what is the probability of x greater than a anyone would like to highlight what is the probability have you seen this computation it is very simple to compute it would be just in term of exponential e to the power minus lambda times a so computation of this probability is much easier that's why we are computing uh, you can verify this one because you know the density function it is the density function and just try to compute the probability that x is greater than a and what you do before that you need to integrate from a onward a to infinity and you will get the value corresponding value would be just exponential that's why we are taking such kind of event so what is happening that so just uh, in order to compute this uh, uh, cdf 
we are going to compute CDF that simply from the computational framework this CDF is what it is just from the definition of CDF it would be what it is talking about probability that x is observing value uh, greater than x given a because we are defining CDF in conditional framework okay so from the definition of simply treat this one as a probability the CDF has been expressed in term of probability so uh, consider consider this as a probability so what is it is an event and a is defined that t is greater than t so what will happen that it is from the definition of conditional probability it is talking about joint occurrence of x is greater than a small x and t is greater than a small t divided by and the probability of occurrence of a what is a a is talking about t greater than t so that's why we are writing it like this way now oh, further if you try to see oh, what is meaning of this one if you try to elaborate this one it is this uh, x is talking about waiting time at t bus has already preceding bus has already arrived okay uh, so after that uh, we could not catch that bus so we have to wait for next bus so that's way uh, this point would be what waiting time it will start t onward so this point would be x plus after t x plus t so after t means what x plus t so that we say that x plus t so if you are saying x is greater than uh, small x what does from the time waiting time perspective because time is the, here this this one is time axis so from the time perspective x is greater than a small x it is equivalent to say that uh, the time is greater than x plus t in the time axis so this this event is equivalent to t is greater than x plus t okay so now uh, this conditional probability it would be equivalent to uh, this probability from the definition of conditional probability okay it would be equal so if you try to focus on it is what it is talking about joint occurrence of t greater than t plus x and t greater than t so what is the common thing between these two if you try to see common thing be between these two this is the common segment that t is greater than uh, x plus t of x t plus x t greater than uh, t plus x so this one is the common segment uh, between these two event when t is greater than a small t and t, t is greater than t plus x so this would be the common uh, common event so that's where this joint occurrence uh, uh, of these two it just limited to probability of this uh, event this common um, event okay divided by probability of a that means that means t greater than uh, t okay a uh, small t so from the uh, this definition of uh, uh, tail probability for exponential random variable what would be this it would be e to the power minus lambda times x plus t and from definition because t is exponentially dis distributed and this one the probability of this one would be e to the power minus lambda times t so we know from the property of exponential so easily here e to the power minus lambda t, lambda times t it will cancel out from the numerator and denominator and only remaining thing would be what e to the power minus lambda times x so what is that that one is talking about probability that x is observing value greater than x that means uh, regarding x uh, so this event uh, here this here this segment is talking about x is greater than a small x so easily you can see that this conditional probability is equal to this un unconditional probability so what is this it is simply saying that conditioning over a is not going to affect the probability this probability it is same it is equal to so simply you can say that occurrence of a first is not going to occurrence affect the occurrence of this event x is greater than a small x it is not so simply we can say that these are independent there is no conditioning uh, due to conditioning there is no dependency these are independent simply so that's where that property we are saying that memorylessness property so it is a homework uh, if you replace this x random variable um, exponential random variable by geometric random variable then it will have the similar result you can establish uh, same memorylessness property for uh, geometric random variable okay try to establish you will see the similar situation similar situation you will see there now uh, i will talk uh, the relation between conditioning and total probability theorem with the help of that we will solve few problem 
uh, interesting kind of problem how it simplifies these two if come in together how simplify problem we will see it here so suppose we are having a sample of space with uh, a partition the these are the uh, member of partition or disjoint event which, which introduce partition of the sample of space then what is happening that then density of x can be written as as a weighted probability of ei weight is provided by the con corresponding conditional pdf of x condition on ei okay so it is simply see that uh, here uh, uh, how if someone is willing to see the uh, definition of this one uh, how it is coming so proof is very much implied from the law of total probability law of total from the law of total probability easily you can verify this one how it is coming so from there easily you can verify uh, it would be not not an issue so this we call it tot uh, directly uh, what is happening that we are introducing here conditioning over x conditioning uh, uh, conditioning through we try to come up with the conditional probability of x condition on ai so uh, through partition so if this partition is totally our approach we try to so we are just uh, trying to break the sample of space in various part um, segment disjoint segment and we know about those disjoint segment and over those dis disjoint segment we can compute conditional probability mass function and uh, what is happening that we will take that at, at, as a weight of the probability of occurrence of those segment and if you sum up all those things or we, we do pro, um, if you proceed in weighted sum process then we will we can compute the overall uh, pdf of x so here this computation would be much easier in order to sometimes it would be very difficult to compute uh, uh, pdf of a random variable but if you go through this approach it would be relatively easier task easier job okay so that approach so it is just one application of total probability theorem what we call it so another like uh, uh, why we come up with this one here what is happening that in the definition of uh, uh, expectation if you replace this uh, what uh, from the definition of expectation we know we know that if x is a uh, what uh, it is a continuous random variable then we define it as uh, integration from minus infinity to infinity of uh, we, what weighted x uh, that means x time corresponding probability of uh, that means how we define probability it is f of x times d of x and we uh, integrate or integrate from minus infinity to from the definition uh, it, it is directly coming and now what you do here replace this f of x uh, this density of x by this uh, total representation total probability uh, density representation also uh, you can say that so from uh, that segment you will see that the expectation will be bifurcated into like this way total expectation law we call this one is the total expectation law so proof is very much simple uh, just uh, replace this f of x by this one and someone is willing to see the proof of this one just uh, proceed with uh, what we call it uh, uh, total probability law what we had already defined so how total probability law what, what it was so, so if you are willing to find probability of a at, uh, where uh, the sample of space is having uh, segment this one segment has been partitioned into this one segment like a1 a2 up to an then in that scenario what is happening that this probability can be written as uh, summation from probability of ai times probability of a given ai and just argue this uh, definition of probability uh, that means total um, probability theorem with the definition of conditional probability and you will see this relation so you can take it it is a homework uh, you can take this as a homework and you can establish this result you can establish this result okay you can in that one is not an issue and likewise also you can bifurcate the, this uh, definition of expectation uh, this would if you substitute uh, f of x uh, uh, through this uh, total concept 
then it will be converted into in this way. So here, uh, why we are converting expectation of x like this way? Because uh, uh, computing this conditional expectation would be much easier, much easier. That's why through some kind of easier partition, it would be much easier to compute. So that's why we are computing like this way. Likewise, also we can extend it for any expected value rule. We can. That means if uh, we are having a function of random variable x, that means g of x, then we can find expected value of this one through this conditioning approach as well. So you can, so all these three are uh, what uh, uh, imply, uh, you can easily all, all implied from total probability law. I would like to say implied from. So we'll get a application of this one here. Like uh, in order to compute mean and variance of a piecewise constant PDF. So if you are having a random variable, which is having piecewise constant PDF, then how we can compute that? Because uh, in piecewise constant, that means it is very easy to see that uh, in the various segment, the uh, PDF would be constant. There would be segmentation. So those segmentation will introduce partition of the sample space because it will introduce partition of the range of uh, random variable and hence that will bring back partition of the sample space. So that's why easily we can introduce partitioning due to this piecewise nature of PDF. Okay, so it's very easy to introduce. So we are having a PDF like this way. It is PDF is defined as it is taking value 1 by 3 when x is observing value between 0 to 1 and PDF is taking uh, 2 by 3 when x is observing value 1 to 2. Okay, so it is having two kind of PDF. So piecewise continuous here up to uh, up to 1 pdf is taking value 1 by 3 and uh, 1 to 2 onward uh, up to 2 it is taking value 2 by 3 so easily we, you can say that here pdf is piece wise constant so due to that we can say that uh, range of range out, outside 0 to 2 uh, PDF is 0 otherwise PDF is 0 it is already given we have to focus on uh, between 0 to 2 so simply we can say that uh, it is having a partition it, it is uh, one partition is 0 to 1 another partition is 1 to 2 so clearly two partitions so, so that partition it uh, reverts back to bring partition of the sample space omega so easily we can say that there are two partitions so due to that uh, what is happening that uh, we can uh, introduce two events a1, A1 is talking about interval 0, 1 when x is observing value between 0, 1. A2 is talking about uh, um, uh, that uh, when x is observing value uh, between 1 to 2, excluding 1. Okay, so these two events will bring back from the framework. You can say that it is uh, A1 of omega, you can call it reverse back uh, from the perspective of what we call it sample space. You can revert back to sample space in order to see partition in the sample space. Okay. Now, so both will share the same probability. Usually, we can say that what is the probability of A1? So, in order to compute probability of A1, so we have to integrate the PDF from 0 to uh, 1 in order to get uh, uh, probability of A1 from the definition of uh, uh, or from the characterization of PDF. So, how we compute probability of A1? So you just see what are the value x is observing in a1 it is observing 0 to 1 so we have to integrate density from 0 to 1 so if you are integrating density from 0 to 1 so what would be value it is constant uh, it is coming 1 by 3 likewise you can compute probability of a2 that means you, have, you need to integrate density function from uh, 1 to 2 then in that process you will get 2 by 3 so 2 by 3 is the probability of occurrence of a2 so you got the probability of a1 a2 so everything is fine that means these are the prior prior property of a1 a2 so everything you got and a1 a2 introducing partition of omega x and hence uh, a1 of omega and a2 of omega will introduce partition of uh, what we call it uh, omega so simply it is introducing partitioning and both will have the same partition now if you try to focus over conditional uh, pdf of x given a1 so what is happening that how you can compute uh, this probability so from the definition of conditional pdf it is very easy to find conditional uh, so here just you have to limit it to this one so what would be here uh, the pdf uh, pdf of x it would be normalized by probability of a1 what is the probability of a1 it is 1 by 3 and what is the value of pdf uh, 
between a 0 to 1 it is 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 by 1 by 3 equal to 1 so density is equal to 1 when x conditional density of x given a1 is equal to 1 when x is observing value between 0 to 1 and outside 0 to 1 the conditional density would be 0 because a1 is not observing value outside 0 to 1 so that's why this is the conditional density of x given a1 likewise uh, we can compute conditional density of uh, x given a2 so before that what we do once we are having conditional density of x given a1 we can compute conditional expectation of x, x given a1 because we have to in order, in order, order to compute this uh, uh, expectation so we have to utilize this uh, uh, conditional pdf so with the help of that we are getting conditional pdf of x given a1 it is 1 by 2 and conditional uh, this uh, uh, second moment this conditional second moment easily also we can get it how it is talking about uh, weighted this uh, x square times conditional pdf of x given a1 second moment we are and here the distribution is provided by conditional pdf so just you, you do integrate it from 0 to 1 because a1 is taking value between 0 to 1 outside uh, a1 uh, this density is 0 so we don't have to bother about okay so we can find the uh, uh, this uh, second moment cut the second conditional moment as well and now why we are finding this one because we have to find the variance as well so that's where this quantity will help to find the variance of this piecewise constant pdf now in the similar framework we can say that uh, if you are introducing conditioning by a2 that means conditional pdf of x given a2 so what we do we are normalizing we are normalizing the conditional pdf by the probability of a2 what is the probability of a2 2 by 3 and what is the value of conditional what marginal pdf of x that one is 2 by 3 so it would be simply 2 by 3 by by 2 by 3 and uh, and hence the conditional pdf it would be equal to 1 where condition we introduce through a2 so this one is equal to 1 when x is observing value uh, when we confine to just uh, this this one is a2 when we confine to a2 then conditional pdf would be again 1 and when we confine to a1 again conditional pdf would be 1 but uh, these two conditional PDF are different because conditioning we introduce by different different events. So that's where. And if you are coming with this conditional PDF, likewise we can easily compute this conditional expectation and this this second uh, order, second moment conditional uh, conditioning by A2, we will get this value. Okay. This will help to find variance of the PDF. That's where we are coming with. So now we are going to compute uh, our desired thing that expectation and variance. So if you are willing to compute expectation, so again law of total expectation, it will come as like this way. It will talk about uh, weighted sum of the probability of partition. Okay. So probability of, uh, probability of AI times um, here the weight is provided by corresponding uh, conditional expectation so we are having this value what is the value of this one it is uh, 1 by 3 and conditional expectation is 1 by 2 uh, likewise uh, for a2 uh, uh, p of a2 uh, probability is 2 by 3 and conditional expectation is uh, 3 by 2 so simplify all these and and hence we are we are getting conditional expectation equal to 7 by 6 so uh, this approach is very much uh, easier for those kind of random variable when you automatically see partitioning of omega x and hence it will bring partitioning of omega so somehow if you are observing partitioning then directly go for this uh, total law total probability law uh, and easily it will help to find probability of um, everything whatever you it will help to find density it will help help to find uh, what we call it uh, expectation it will help to find variance so we are having second moment as well so we can compute uh, off from this competition and hence we can find the various as well so this approach is very much uh, uh, inspired from the characterization of uh, distribution pattern of the random variable how uh, x is observing value so based on that if you come up with some partitioning idea it is helping to simplify computation of expectation computation of variance and computation of pdf as well first computation of pdf then you will talk about other things so likewise also you can uh, you can see it here if this one is not given so as in, you can also compute this quantity as well in term of these things so it would be just what uh, conditional uh, the pdf this pdf would be in term of conditional uh, pdf pi 
let me erase it so it would be something like this so this pdf would be equal to from the total law of priority equal to priority of ai in terms of partition what we call it times conditional expectation of a given x given a okay i varies from number of partition or how many partition here uh, i vary from 1 to 2 so you have to just uh, introduce if, if you are coming with idea of partitioning or uh, segmentation then there here this in this segment you see that uh, probability is uniform so automatically you can say that uh, density conditional density would be equal to 1 over this interval because it is uniform and here again with length one with length one also you have to focus on length as well and this one is also here in this uh, uh, interval sub interval call it some interval again density is uniform it, it is throughout constant and what what is the width of this one so that's where conditional density over this width would be uh, again one so from the the uniform law easily you can derive the conditional PDF. This conditional PDF, PDF easily you can derive because of uniformity of all these things. So, so due to that you can compute uh, PDF of X through this approach. If you, this one is even not given, thus just this graph is given to you. Then you from this graph easily you can find uh, density. Okay, through uniform principle. So then uniform principle is a basic one. This one is a very simple example. Uh, later complicated example you will see it. Now. Uh, we will talk a little bit about uh, com computation of joint PDF. After that, I will wind up this lecture. So here, uh, uh, before going to discuss about computation of joint PDF, let us discuss about uh, conditional property density function uh, of x given y. Okay, so this, uh, so when we are having two random variables in that situation we are talking about. So suppose uh, here uh, the conditional PDF of x we are introducing conditioning by another uh, event introduced by another random variable so here y equal to y it will not come it will come here y is observing value between y to y plus delta some interval so here it is coming like this this kind of this is the event so how we introduce so we again introduce from the infinitesimal uh, interval uh, process that means we are taking interval x to so he, here two random variable are coming so you can take in uh, a rectangle framework. so x is observing value along the horizontal axis so y is observing value along the vertical axis so x is taking value between x to x plus delta y in that y is taking value between y to y plus delta we can take delta 1 delta 2 different delta for x different delta for y you can you can proceed with so if you are willing to compute uh, conditional pdf of x given y so here you multiply with delta it, it will talk about probability that x is observing value between x to x plus delta condition on y this is the condition on y this conditioning we introduce so it is simply what it is what once we converted this pdf in term of probability by multiplying that width as infinitesimal width then it becomes what uh, probability conditional probability it is just conditional probability and from the definition of conditional probability we can always write it a joint occurrence of uh, x and y it is talking about when uh, this joint occurrence x or y uh, uh, in the rectangle uh, rectangle take uh, if you're taking so this is the re desired rectangle so okay where we talk about joint occurrence of x and y okay divide by uh, then uh, probability of y when it is observing value between y to y plus delta so all these are coming so further we simplify it so if you simplify this joint occurrence so it is what it is dealing with if you talk uh, talking about jo joint occurrence of x and y over this uh, rectangular then uh, what would be the probability so probability would be uh, equal to joint probability of x and y, joint density of x and y times uh, area of this uh, uh, rectangular what is the area it is delta square divided by uh, if you are willing to compute this probability it would be what uh, it would be density of f y 
times width of this interval so delta is coming so further if you cancel out everything cancel this delta and here delta or everything cancel out and you will get an explicit representation of uh, conditional density of x given y it is actually ratio of uh, joint density of x and y times the uh, and density of y marginal density of y so this is the definition of conditional probability density for x given y similarly you can compute uh, conditional density of y given x in the same framework as a ratio of joint density uh, and uh, marginal density of x okay so uh, the computation uh, i just discussed about how to compute this one this conditional probability density okay and with the help of that uh, by introducing um, by taking advantage of conditional probability density uh, uh, density and uh, the definition of, uh, the definition of uh, conditional probability mass uh, conditional probability it will lead to uh, compute joint density function why suppose we are observing y first so that means you know the density of y after y you are observing x so that's where conditional density of x given y will come so it is just directly implied from multiplication rule so this is the process or this is the process to compute joint density of x and y and likewise someone is observing x first so for that person uh, density of x will be known after uh, observing x you are trying to observe y so conditional density of x given y would come so another person may compute joint density in the in this framework so all these are an application of what we call it uh, <laughs> Uh, multiplication rule and simply borrow it, it is borrowed from definition of conditional probability what I would like to say that so here we are having a very much a specific definition of joint density here we are having very much a specific definition of joint density so how we define it so joint density also if you try to see from the uh, perspective of uh, limit approach you can say that uh, joint density is the limiting case of joint occurrence of x and y in the in this rectangular size okay rectangular region divided by the width of area of the rectangle this is the area of the rectangular uh, region so that means simply it says the probability per unit area simply limiting case of probability per unit area it is talking about to joint probability density function of x so this is the definition of joint probability density function and this is the definition what we call it and if you talk about uh, practical approach to compute uh, joint density, this is the practical approach of computing joint density. Practical approach. So we will try to go for this approach to compute um, joint density. Otherwise, if you are very good in limiting situation, limit of uh, function of two variable, then you can go for this definition of joint uh, probability density. So this is the end of today's lecture. Other things we will discuss in next class.